Last year, I made a video focused on all the poly bags we got with a LEGO Star Wars magazine, and I have rebuilt them all to compare with this year's, which I actually have all 12 built. That being said, by the time the video goes out, we should have got a look into our 11th for the UK. And because I am here in the UK, it does mean that technically for other areas of Europe, I'll be including last year's December issue because we got it here in January. And likewise, this December's issue, we will be getting next year instead, which is why I've been able to do it a whole month earlier than I thought I would be able to. I have built Ahsoka's T6 shuttle though from the magazine that we're not getting for another month or at least to the best of my ability and also built based on the next time, the next issue, the Bad Batch shuttle, which honestly I think are cool models, but I'm not sure they quite add up to what we got last year. So without further ado, let's take a look at every single poly bag we got with a Lego Star Wars magazine here in 2024. Starting off with January, we got the Mandalorian Fleet Commander. I will put prices up on the left side of the screen to see how they've changed throughout the course of the year, though they're not great comparisons considering every new minifigure or build will be a month more recent and definitely take them with a grain of salt. But it's a great minifigure to be getting. Last year, we got a Bo-Katan, but Bo-Katan did not come with both her helmet and her headpiece, which this fleet commander does. I don't think it is a double, it is a double-sided head, so it's a good thing I pulled off the hairpiece. I always forget to look for the double-sided face print, but it's a really cool minifigure, otherwise exclusive to the Fang Fighter versus Tie Interceptor, and I think he's come out in a few different books for my American audience, or those of you that have been unable to get any of these magazines. I still don't understand why LEGO don't deliver them everywhere. Then February saw the Emperor, Palpatine himself, who I think is still exclusive to that one final dual set because of those lack of pupils that he is displaying. Really cool minifigure, an iconic minifigure for Lego Star Wars, even more so than the farm boy Luke we get in the Land Speeder set. And this Palpatine minifigure does have a double sided head. But it looks like I won't be able to show it to you because the head has come off with the mask, which is never good for a Lego minifigure, but it's a bit of an angrier expression. And I think the fact that Palpatine comes with both lightsaber elements, that's something I really wanted growing up with Lego Star Wars. And it's great to see them including it nowadays. Minifigure three in a row already. We are January, February, March, and we've got the Coruscant Guard Trooper which by this point had come out in the battle pack, but had also come out in the more pricey gunship. Really cool minifigure. We are getting the clone head underneath. I would like to see a bit of variation to this, but they've only just started varying the trooper faces and the rebel faces. So perhaps it'll be a while before we get some updated clone heads. But next year, Revenge of the Sith's anniversary is definitely a good opportunity to do so. It's not the only clone we get this year. There's actually quite a few, but first off, we've got our fourth Lego Star Wars minifigure in a magazine. Are we going to get any builds this year? Well, spoiler alert, I guess I've already mentioned two at the start, and you'll have to stay tuned to see next month. But in April, which is the month of my birthday, we get Chewbacca. Honestly, one of my favourite Star Wars characters. One of the oldest Star Wars characters as well, because he hasn't been killed off unlike Yoda and a few of the other ones that you'd put into the mix so potentially Chewie could be the oldest Star Wars character to exist but there's some competition between him and Maz Kanata I don't think they killed off Maz so he does have a rivalry he comes with a stud shooter which is I think it might be the first time I've seen this in a Lego Star Wars magazine in the last like five years most of the other minifigures come with a blaster the reason they're a blaster and not a gun Lego doesn't like producing guns. They say they haven't, but definitely for themes like Indiana Jones, they have previously, but they tend to call them blasters instead because laser rifles are cool. And I don't think we've got an updated crossbow piece that matches Chewbacca's laser crossbow we see in the sequels and elsewhere, but we get a closer look at it in the sequels. A solid minifigure and now onto the builds. The first build does not come with this display stand, which it's a little disappointing because it's two extra pieces that enable it to stand up. But again, I guess it's more pieces that would distract from the actual build. But I'm using this so I can show it off a bit easier without covering most of the model with my hands. You can see a can cap 
on the front. Very interesting piece they use to represent the engine. Just at the front here, I've got this from Sonic Set. Some of these magazines I don't even own the original versions of, and I didn't pick up this one, but fairly simple parts usage. We've got a few similar pieces to the N1. I think I mentioned swapping out something for a piece that's on the microfighter, but I can't exactly remember that. I like the way they built the engines with a mix of Lego and Technic. It's always fun to do stuff like that. And the little bits of yellow on the side as well. Solid model. It's quite flat and there are a load, a load of small pieces. These are all one by two plates with one by two jumpers on top. So it doesn't feel as big as some of the ones we're used to getting. But the next month we are in... I think that was May, so this is June's now. We've got the Lambda Class Shuttle. Honestly, I'm going to say my favourite build and probably up there for my favourite magazine of this year. The wings do open, which is why I've got it on this display plate. And I think this is one of the best builds we've got in a LEGO Star Wars magazine for, well, I'm going to say it for the last couple of years here. I can't think of any build that rivals this Lander class shuttle. It is so fun. The bottom is told off, which is quite nice. But before we get to the other models, we are back into minifigures. Sabine Wren, my favourite. I thought my favourite was going to be the Fleet Commander. And then we got Palpatine. And then we got a Shock Trooper. And then we got Sabine Wren herself. All the accessories. You can currently buy this minifigure on my Bricklink store for a couple quid. So if you don't own a Sabine Wren, I'm pretty sure I've got worldwide shipping up. So as long as Bricklink ships to you, well, as long as Royal Mail will ship out to your location, you can pick up a Sabine Wren for less price than the magazine would cost. And I think that's really nice that they've kept the price of Sabine Wren down because of releasing her in the magazine. I'm sure that's not true for all areas of the world because shipping can get very, very expensive. But the fact that we get the hair piece as well, just like the Fleet Commander, is something I don't see LEGO going back on anytime soon. And our second Clone Trooper from the year as well. First off, the Shock Trooper. Now we've got the 501st Officer. Really nice. I was hoping that meant we'd get two of these macro binoculars. It only came with one in the poly bag. A little, little disappointment, but honestly, a really cool minifigure to get. Magazines aren't meant for army building, so... You might not want a bunch of officers, but you're definitely going to want a second officer. The battle pack comes with two heavies, two officers, no, two heavies, one specialist and one officer. This is the specialist, forgive me, not the officer. You're definitely going to want more specialists than officers. Two of these to hang back would be really cool. And that's if you haven't picked up two battle packs already. Now, this isn't technically a Lego Star Wars magazine issue minifigure in with the others this is a special one we got for this year with a vader tin that i'm still haven't seen anywhere so haven't been able to pick up but the vader minifigure that comes in it is just your typical darth vader it's cool to get a bonus minifigure this year the angrier expression as well which i guess if you haven't picked up i'm trying to think what other sets vader has come in now he's come in the tie bomber which is where I got mine, and also the Final Door Diorama. I think that's actually it. I don't think we've had Vader in too many sets this year. Not many Vaders, not many Chewies, not many Mandalorians. I'm very proud of where LEGO are headed. But the next minifigure in the series is this Phase 2 regular shiny clone trooper, which was a pain to find on shelves. In fact, I didn't find any of these magazines on shelves, because I'm sure the first person to spot them was just buying them all, trying to sell the minifigure, which is pointless because this minifigure comes in a battle pack. The magazine is like seven odd quid for three and a bit times that price or even less if you can find it on sale. You can get three of these in a battle pack. As I said, rubbish army builders, but a really, really awesome minifigure to see in the magazine. That's our third clone trooper of this year. And I'm so happy that they gave us those three. We also get a TIE Pilot as well from the recent sets. I think the TIE Interceptor, the TIE X-Wing Rebuild the Galaxy set. And I, I think there's another set that this TIE Pilot comes in. Unless I'm just thinking of this magazine. It's a cool minifigure. Again, not really one you'd want to army build. But if you have built a custom Imperial ship or some sort of mock yourself and don't own a pilot... It's a really cool way to pick one up. Plus, if you are building a hangar, I mentioned 
you might want to pick up a few of these minifigures from people selling them from the magazine just to populate your hangar. Now we're getting into the custom builds here of the new magazines because I don't own a lot of the pieces, especially in dark red, but I've tried to recreate the official model as accurately as I can with one exception on the back, the engines. Why don't Lego color in the engines? We saw it with the shuttle Tidarium. This is officially on the model at the back, that plate there but they never add any effect to the engine. So I've added these little candle elements to the back to make it look like the T6 is flying forward. And I really like how they've built this model so that the wings can spin 360 degrees, at least if you're not displaying it on a custom plate. So it's a really, really fun model. And that also goes for the Bad Batch shuttle. But honestly, Comparing it to the Shuttle Tidarium, which we will bring forward, and this is November and December's build for the UK, or October, November's for most other places in Europe. I think at one point we were on par with Germany, but I think we've slipped out again because they missed a magazine. Look at the Imperial Shuttle compared to the Bad Batch Shuttle. It does dwarf it quite a bit, and there's roughly the same amount of pieces, but these have giant elements. Lego could definitely have added a slightly bigger element for the wing. I guess it would have been a little difficult to keep the size proportion, but something similar to the Shuttle Tidarium would have been nice to have gotten. But our fourth and final build of the year is this Bad Batch Shuttle, which you can be expecting in the UK around December time. And again, most other places will be getting this in November. It would be nice to see if we get a 13th build this year, just before New Year though. I think they're gonna leave it for early January and maybe we can be lucky enough next year to get a 13th. Like with the Tidarium Shuttle, the wings do fold up, not quite as neatly and vertical, but I quite like the technique they use to get these wings on the side in the first place. And blasters at the front, and I have added some engines at the back with a Technic piece, which I really hope to see on the official LEGO model. We've only got an image at the back of the magazine, and... The engines do look like they're just some computer generated image. So I'd love to see them. But besides that, there's really no complaints. And this is every single Lego Star Wars magazine poly bag we've got this year. But how does it compare with last year? Well, last year, you can see we got a few more builds. We got six builds, six minifigures, even though 3PO and this Gonk Droid did come 50-50. It's nice to see we got an even split. This year was definitely more focused on minifigures, technically getting seven if you include the bonus magazine that you would have got if you get the regular Lego Star Wars magazine. Perhaps that's what they included to offset these magazines so we only got another 12 this year, which would have been a really, really smart technique come to think about it. But in terms of which is better, I think we've got to take into account a few different things. First off, the models were definitely a lot bigger last year, a lot bigger pieces, and there were just more of them. Even this Y-Wing uses a lot of smaller pieces, and if we were to bring in something like the recent Bad Batch Shuttle, which I know is the smallest of them, it's just not quite the same size. There, It's not a massive difference that we should be lobbying at the LEGO headquarters or anything crazy like that, but they just feel like they've been shrunk down to sort of three-quarter versions for the latest models, so I think 2023 is going to have to take the cake. But for minifigures, we've got Bo-Katan without the hairpiece, but we'll let them slide with that because they have started doing it for the Fleet Commander and Sabine. We get one clone, two Stormtroopers, and then we get 3PO who's been in a load of sets. We get Kenobi who was in a set that was as cheap as £20-£15 if you picked it up on some of the crazy deals that we were having. Whereas this year, Fleet Commander's in an expensive set. I guess we had Bo-Katan in an expensive set and the clone actually was in the ATTE walk up. We got Palpatine who was in a diorama only. Coruscant Guard who was in a battle pack. So fair enough, that's our Kenobi level figure. Then we get Chewbacca who I don't think has been really in many sets as of recent. Yavin probably is the only set that he is in. We also have Sabine from the T6. We have another battle pack minifigure. So that is similar to the trooper and the mech that we got last year and then we have another battle pack minifigure a bunch of clones i've noticed rather than imperials and then we get a tie pilot some expensive sets for the tie pilot but there are quite a few they're roughly balanced but i'm gonna have to give it to 2024 for the combination of the hair pieces with our minifigures 
for the clone troopers and actually all the right accessories because we've got some different blasters like the one on the specialist here and we also get the bonus vader minifigure so minifigures have got 2024 but the builds would have been nice to have seen any better. The best one overall is definitely the Shuttle Tidarium, and they do pair up quite nicely with the minifigures. Unlike last year, where we see a load of, or well, we get the ATTE for the 212 minifigure, we get, I think that's the only connection that can be made. And we've also seen our worst LEGO Star Wars magazine build ever this TIE Striker. I mean, Yoda's Jedi Starfighter. I still don't know what they were thinking but let me know down in the comments so it's pretty balanced for me i prefer the minifigures this year and the builds of last year though that shuttle tidarium is really really cool what do you think is the best year for the lego star wars magazine and thank you so much for making it to the end of this video be sure to leave your comment below and check out some of the other videos on screen now and may the bricks be with you always